What's going on guys, in this video we're taking a look at the big three-way trade that went down today. The Nashville Predators trading Ryan Ellis to the Philadelphia Flyers for Nolan Patrick and Philip Myers. They then flipped Nolan Patrick to the Vegas Golden Knights for Cody Glass. So, pretty big trade, a lot of moving parts. Honestly, when I saw this, I was very surprised to see Nashville trade Ryan Ellis. He's still a good defenseman, easily a top four defenseman in this game. Very offensive, not that old there, 29 years old, uh, making $6.2 million for six more years. Uh, so, I mean, that is a big contract, and after this trade, with the Arvidsson trade beforehand, I feel like Nashville is definitely in a full rebuild at this point, uh, which is kind of interesting because they did make the playoffs this year, but of course they're out in the first round of Carolina. I think, you know, they probably looked at their core and just feel like their core is not good enough to win. Uh, they still have Yossi locked up as well for $9 million for seven more years. Not really sure what's going to happen there, but Ryan, also you guys can see in game, 29.86, 6.2 for another seven years, top four D-man. Uh, first round pick back in 2009, 11th overall. Again, very good offensively. He's just a solid all-around defenseman as well. I know early on he kind of dropped in that 2009 draft because he was 5'10". This is before you know NHL teams realized height's not the only thing that matters for defensemen. You can also just be good at the game, and uh, that's exactly what Ellis is. Look at his full career stats here. You can see uh, for defensemen he produces as well. He's just good defensively. So Philadelphia gets a very good defenseman here, and I mean they gave up a decent amount in Patrick and Myers, but. Really not as much as you'd expect, honestly. Like, I would have thought Ryan Ellis would go for more than this. Now, having said that, guys, using the EA rosters, Nolan Patrick has a ton of value as he still has medium league potential, being the second overall pick back in 2017. Uh, personally, though, with my custom rosters, I give him low lead because I think at this point, there's a low chance he's going to be an elite player. Uh, so, like I was mentioning, 21 years old, 80 overall. Uh, he does need a new contract. You can see roll there through line checking forward, potential medium elite. Again, I think it's a little bit high. He's power forward. Even at low elite, he actually ends up being a pretty good player in franchise because usually he'll help you get like a nice chemistry boost and uh, play well in whatever line you use him. Uh, you can see he saddled all of last year. This year he actually did play. So 18-19, 31 points. The year before, 30 points again. For a second overall pick, you'd hope for a bit more than that. Now they're also getting Philip Myers. Uh, we'll see how good he is in game. Uh, so he's 23 years old, 81 overall, making 2.5 for the next three years. So pretty good contract, still young. I think I actually boosted him to like an 82 and also gave him medium top four. So maybe this will work out because I made Myers more valuable in my custom roster, Patrick less valuable, but still Patrick mean medium lead, I think, uh, crazy. 6'5", is a big defenseman, um, so kind of the opposite, I guess, of Ryan Ellis. But again, I don't know. I thought Ryan Ellis for sure would have gotten a first round pick and then some. I guess, you know, because Patrick's former second overall, Myers is still a solid young defenseman. So you can see the trade value is heavily on the Flyers side. No way they say yes to this. And yeah, trade's rejected. So I'll uh, we'll just force this thing through. Probably have to add like a first round pick. And there, oh wow, trade is still rejected again. Uh, Patrick though, definitely overvalued. And with two first round picks, they say yes. So after that, we're not gonna try the second part of this trade, flipping Patrick to the Vegas Golden Knights for Cody Glass. I believe Cody Glass has high top six potential. He does. So 21 years old, same age, he was in the exact same draft, 2017, he was the 6th overall pick, 79, so what is he, an overall below Patrick, he's got high top 6 opposed to medium elite, uh, my custom roster, I believe I left him at high top 6, uh, whereas Patrick, of course, like I said, I dropped to low elite, uh, Patrick's one overall higher, again, I think in real life, who would I rather have, <sighs> man, that's tough to say, like, um, neither are really proven as an NHL player yet, Patrick though has a lot more injury issues, where Glass is kind of just like slowly... Um, making that jump to the NHL, but he hasn't done it yet. Patrick's got more NHL experience, um, so I think Patrick has the higher ceiling, but it's a higher risk, higher reward due to the injuries, whereas Glass, I think, will make the NHL, but uh, looks like he'll probably top out as like a second-line guy. So we consider these two to be pretty similar in value. I think the main reason Nashville made this trade is because Cody Glass is actually exempt from the expansion draft, whereas Nolan Patrick is not, and of course, Vegas, being a former expansion team from four years ago, they don't have to lose a player, so they don't have to worry about Patrick, whether or not he's exempt. Nashville, of course, does have to worry about that. I had them going five D-men, three forwards. Myers does need to protect it, so he'll be like Ellis's protection spot. At forward, I think I had them protecting Forsberg, Kunin, and Yarncroc. Uh, so now they can still do the exact same protection, but uh, they get to add glass. So looking at the trade like that, I think it makes sense. Vegas already has a good team willing to take the higher risk, higher reward prospect in Patrick, whereas Nashville rebuilding, they need to get you know, a player who's actually gonna be in their top six soon in Cody Glass. I think Vegas says yes to this. And they do. Also, guys, I should mention, I always forget, the treasure clue I use for these videos is medium, as that's the default one. So, after those deals, we'll see what the Predators lineup might look like for next season. Again, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be too great. All right, guys, so here's my best guess of the Preds lineup for next season. Again, this is without any signs or trades. I actually have both Halla and Granlin scratched. They're pending UFAs. I could see both of them testing the market. So, 
In terms of forwards, I got Forsberg, Duchesne, and Glass of the first line. I feel like if you're making that big trade for Glass, you got to get him some NHL minutes, give him a chance to succeed. I've got Tomasino making the team on the second line, playing with Hansen and Tolvin. First similar to Minnesota, I feel like Nashville's going with the youth movement. you got to get those young guys some minutes, play them in the top six. Uh, Jan Kroc, Kunin, Seasons, the third line. Grimaldi, Richardson, and Cousins is the fourth line. Defensively here, we got Yossi and Fabra on the top pair. Myers, Ekholm, second. And then Carrier and Benny is the bottom pair. My expansion draft protection list, I had them protecting all of their defensemen except for Benning here. So they're probably going to lose a forward. I had Duchesne and Johansson both available. Is Seattle going to take on one of those guys at $8 million? I'm not sure if they're not. Maybe they go with the Seasons or something like that. But Nashville... I don't know, we'll see kind of who they lose. Also, next year I'll give you guys your first look at both Myers and Glass as a Nashville Predator. I know their game face isn't going to be any good, but we can at least, you know, see the jersey in-game. So Myers there, again, 6'5", five, number 5 on the Preds. I feel like, you know, big defenseman probably helps out the Nashville Predators. Um, I don't really think any of their defensemen are too big. And then Cody Glass, I feel like, you know, he could be a good fit in Nashville. I'm hoping both him and Nolan Patrick play well on their new teams. Obviously, you want to work out for those guys. Cody Glass's game face is actually really good. Glass number nine, but yeah, his is actually pretty spot on. So next, guys, we'll take a look at the trade from, I guess, Philly's perspective. And then finally, from the Vegas Golden Knights. All right, guys, so trying this trade is Philly. You can see Nashville does have Ellis on the block. Uh, reason being, they're a seller. They got Ekholm on the block as well. Patrick and Myers combined there have more value. I feel like Nashville says yes to this. And they do. So very interesting. Again, uh, in-game, Patrick has way too much value, but um, it's one of the things that EA rosters. So after the trade, guys, just an update look at the Flyers lines. In terms of the forwards, they're still really good, even without Patrick. I mean, you got Giroud, Kachiri, Kuneki in the first line. Uh, they might lose somebody like Vorchek to Seattle, but they'll save a bunch of money, so, which they could then use for somebody else in free agency. So we're very curious to see what happens there. But like, you look at their top nine, it is solid. Uh, fourth line, you, I think we got Morgan Frost there who could push into the top nine, maybe take one of the spots that uh, become available from Vorchek or whoever Seattle picks. In terms of the defense, adding Ryan Ellis just makes their defense so much better. You now have Kovarov and Ellis in the top pair, with Braun and Sandheim on the second, Gosses, Fair and Hag on the bottom pair. Um, Ellis is going to obviously be protected along Kovarov and Sandheim, so they're really not going to be losing that great of a defenseman. Carter Hart and Gould didn't have the greatest season last year, but he looked good before that, so hopefully for them it was just a fluke year, and he kind of returns to his old self playing well, in which case... You know, the Flyers should be a playoff team. Other three teams involved in the trade, I'm not really sure which team lost the trade, but I do think that Philadelphia won the trade as they got Ryan Ellis, in my opinion, for very, very cheap. Uh, Nolan Patrick, you know, has got injury issues. Not looking like a second overall pick at all. And then Philip Myers, who Ellis is just better than one-to-one. -one. So uh, the difference between Ellis and Myers is not Nolan Patrick. That's why I think, you know, Philadelphia did quite well here. We'll take a look at Ellis as a member of the Philadelphia Flyers. See how that looks. They got definitely, you know, pretty good game face there. They got his beard. Ryan Ellis, number four on the Flyers. Again, I think he's going to fit in really well there. I think the Flyers won this trade for sure. Uh, finally, we'll take a look at the Vegas Golden Knights and see whether or not they get their Patrick or Glass trade to go through. This is kind of funny, guys. I'm trying to trade Glass the Predators for Patrick now, and Nolan Patrick actually has the most trade value of any player in the Predators, which is why EA has got to do a better job of their rosters. Forsberg there should be, like, the second highest behind Yossi. I think I bumped him up to an 88. Uh, Yossi, probably it's just because of the contract, but yeah, Patrick uh, is not the most valuable player on the Predators, so uh, they're probably going to say no to this. Yeah, trade's rejected. I kind of figured that. Again, in real life, I think quite fair trade. And so after the trade, guys, just look at the Vegas Golden Knights roster. Patrick, Stevenson, Stone is a good first line, but it'd be a lot better with a legit 1C, and that, at that point, it'd be like one of the best first lines in hockey. Smith, Carlson, March, so of course, they're always together on that second line. I've got Peyton Krebs, Nolan Patrick, and Alex Tuck on the third line. I feel, you know, you throw a couple of the younger guys there with Tuck. That could be solid. Maybe Vegas even sees Nolan Patrick as a potential 1C in the future. Uh, he'd have to stay healthy and have to really, like, uh, you know, turn his career around, I think, for that to happen. Fourth line, you got Reeves, Watt, and Carrier, which isn't too bad. Uh, defensively, Martinez, Petrangelo, Theodore McNabb, Hag, and Whitecloud. Definitely solid D. Uh, I think they could bring back Martinez. They have about five million in cap space. If they sign him for, say, four million, I don't see why Patrick would get more than, like, a million dollar one year deal. Also, too, very curious to see if Flurry does get dealt by the Vegas Golden Knights because when you're paying your two goalies combined, what, $12 million, it's going to start to add up. So, uh, still a lot more moves, I think, left to be made in the NHL, even after all the craziest that's already happened today. Uh, I will say I'm going to make one more video, so stay tuned for that. It'll be uh, the Maple Leafs with Jared McCann. Take our first look here at Nolan Patrick as a Vegas Golden Knight. Um, his game face also, like Goody Class, is actually pretty good. So, there you go. Nolan Patrick on the Vegas Golden Knights. I actually remember him talking about going to Vegas because I think 
Uh, the first player that ever signed with Vegas Golden Knights was Reed Duke, who also played for the Brandon Wheat Kings, just like Nolan Patrick. So uh, kind of cool to see him going there. Um, also kind of crazy, Vegas Golden Knights have now traded all three first round picks from their first year as a franchise. Glass just got traded. Uh, Nick Suzuki, of course, for Pacioretty, and then Eric Branstrom for Mark Stone. I feel like they definitely got good returns in Pacioretty and Stone. Is Patrick going to be a good return for Cody Glass? We'll have to wait and find out. But that's me it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I'll leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.